In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. Oh. 
to proclaim your love in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God, still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is just. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is grown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think I'm alone in saying that I think many people have been watching the weather report of late, especially in these past nine days or so, with the excessive heat 
And our readings really play into all of this with a clear nature theme. Now, our rare June heat wave has done a number on the pristine green grass that graces our campus. And yet, I realize there are many deeper problems in the world than one's lawn. But I do think it remains true that people often, justifiably so, take pride in their lawns and their gardens. I enjoy seeing the flowers springing up and all the wonders of nature here in the neighborhood. And many people work very hard at their gardens. The backyard is filled with the sound of birds, even if one cardinal made its way into church and later the sacristy a couple of weeks ago, we think that the cardinal left, including with the help of an iPhone placed strategically by the open door to try to lure the bird outside. On a Memorial Day visit to my brother's cabin in Wisconsin while out for a long hike, all around we were surrounded by the tender shoots of the pine trees, revealing the new growth of spring. And for once in my life, I literally took time and just waited and watched and observed. Normally, I would avoid touching a pine tree at all costs, whether it's the stickiness or getting pricked in your finger. But here, in this case, these new growths were irresistibly soft and fragrant, and I couldn't stop just feeling all the different trees around me. Well, the backdrop of our reading today from Ezekiel is very significant, even though we just catch the very end of it using the imagery of nature. It concerns the failure of Zedekiah. In those days, the kingdom of Judah was underneath the larger Babylonian empire, headed by the infamous Nebuchadnezzar. Zedekiah had broken his oath of loyalty to the king of Babylon and ignored the prophet Jeremiah's warnings. Instead, he decides to enter into an alliance with the king of Egypt to throw off the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar. Well, we all know how the story ends. It backfires and soon enough begins the long Babylonian exile. Ezekiel includes the image of the cedar tree in the reading today. It is symbolic of how the Lord will undo the actions of the Babylonian king by rebuilding the dynasty of King David. All so that the nations will realize that only the God of Israel can restore their destiny. And then when we add to that the gospel, we have the image of the mustard seed. It's a beautiful one for the kingdom of God because it reveals that the kingdom can grow. It can expand and spread. But none of this will happen if we impede the growth of the kingdom by our unwillingness to embrace the prerequisites of growth in the spiritual realm in the first place. And that centers upon our virtuous behavior and our full acceptance of the teachings of the gospel. As Catholics, we are both citizens and faithful members of the Church. We do not see a contradiction between the two. But yet, we too enter into alliances of all sorts, if we're honest. And we must consider from the perspective of faith how those alliances might play themselves out. So on the one hand, we live in a pluralistic society. We cannot reasonably expect that every interaction is one based upon the tenets of our Catholic faith. We shop at stores. We don't know the religion of the people who run them. We can make certain decisions. But we live in a pluralistic society. And we have to acknowledge that and engage that. And yet, we do have to make choices. Sometimes they're small choices. Sometimes they're much more significant. As just one example, I myself choose not to eat meat on Fridays, not just during Lent, but throughout the year. I take seriously the call of some form of penance every Friday, which as Catholics we are still bound to do. 
True enough, abstinence from meat may be replaced by some other form of penance outside of Lent. But the Meatless Friday for me has been a consistent reminder for many years of what Jesus has done for me on the cross. And yet at times I found myself in situations where it was nearly impossible to fulfill this without drawing undue attention to myself. In some cases I'm with others, maybe people of a different faith, invited over for a dinner, and all of a sudden I'm not in a position where I can fulfill that. And for me in that case, maybe eating meat is the bigger penance. And so I substitute something different that day. By the same token though, we can make unhealthy alliances whenever we place worldly power and prestige over and against our convictions. Many a Catholic business person has shared with me over the years, especially if they're involved in sales, that they found themselves in awkward situations. Say a man is encouraged to entertain clients, showing them a good time, and all of a sudden they ask him to do something that would be against his faith. Maybe they just want to go out for a drink at a bar, but then they might decide to drink a bit too much, and it's awkward. Or, in some cases, they may ask to frequent an immoral establishment. Here, a Catholic man must, and I repeat, must draw the line in the sand. You're in a situation now where you can make an alliance to do better in business, or you can say to yourself, I won't do this. This goes against deeply held convictions, and doing my job well isn't worth that. And I know a number of people who've made those decisions, even at great personal cost, because they said to their boss later, I'm never going to do that again. Please don't put me in that situation. My brothers and sisters, good for them. Stand tall, stand proud. Don't compromise on essentials, even if we do so on matters in which prudence allows. The various images in all three of our readings, so beautifully read by our lectors today, coalesce into a vision in which God, whether in separating the tender shoot from the cedar to make the withered tree bloom, or in protecting the tiniest seed of all in order to facilitate the great mustard seed. In both of these, God protects the fragile beginnings all so that a stronger and more vibrant reality will emerge. God protects our beginnings so that something stronger will emerge. The Lord promised to take back a remnant, the sprig of the cedar, and in the future, make it flourish. We too will be strengthened such that we ought not to be paralyzed for fear of judgment or reprisal or human respect. For now God will and desires to strengthen our limbs, enabling our life of faith to bloom and prosper. In midst of all else that's swirling around us, let's remain courageous, aspiring to please the Lord above all. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism, the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord knows our every need and urges us to pray to him with confidence. We join now with all God's people in coming before his throne. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he and all bishops joyfully proclaim and defend the sanctity of every human life from the moment of conception. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all young people who are preparing for marriage, with the support of a Christian community, may they grow in love with generosity, faithfulness, and patience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, may many respond generously to God's call to service in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace in the world, may efforts to promote and preserve peace among nations be marked by perseverance and reliance on God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the people of God, as the church continues to foster the growth of the kingdom of God on earth, may her members grow in unity and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may they be purified of sin and share the vision of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we rejoice to be your sons and daughters as we long for the growth of your kingdom. Hear our petitions and bring us safely to our eternal home. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Cathedral Parish is dependent upon the financial support of her many welcome guests. On the Cathedral website, there is a button from which to donate electronically, and there is a QR code in the Parish Bulletin. You may use any of the four stewardship drop boxes for your offering, found at the Selby and Dayton doors before or after Mass. We thank you for your generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so may obtain an inheritance with your elects, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the worlds. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you would take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you. So may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.